Hey, this is Dina. Welcome to the Den. And oh my god, this is the timeliest Silent Hill episode I've done so far. Silent Hill Downpour only came out last year. It's fine with me though. It's a Silent Hill game and I'd rather give it a while to sink in, play it multiple times, and do a little research and make sure I understand it as well as possible and make a well thought out retrospective than to rush out a quick video based on my first impressions only to change my mind about the game later. Because seriously, with a Silent Hill game, that can happen. My experience with this game was pretty similar to my experience with Shattered Memories, where I was very apprehensive about it at first. It was developed by a company I'd never heard of, Vatra Games, and there was no involvement by Akira Yamoka, which was a first for the series. I even temporarily passed it up in favor of Silent Hill HD Collection because Konami made the brilliant decision to release them both in the same month, along with Book of Memories, but the less said about that, the better. Incidentally, before anyone asks, no, I don't plan on covering Book of Memories. I just don't really care about it, and even if I did, I don't even have a PS Vita, so I couldn't play it if I wanted to. Plan is the key word there. I'm wording it carefully this time because you never know, but I digress. What it comes down to is that because I had my reservations about Downpour, I ended up playing it safe and getting HD Collection instead, since I already knew I liked the games that were on it. I also had a minor role in getting the original voices for Silent Hill 2 put back in. How can you sit there eating pizza? This town is full of monsters. And I was very glad that Konami relented and added the voice track that I wanted to speak with my pocketbook. Unfortunately, I had no idea how buggy it would be, but that's a rant for another video. In short, I could only afford one game at the time both games were out, so I got HD Collection instead of Downpour, which I ended up regretting later. I ended up loving Downpour. Not as much as Shattered Memories, but it's at least an improvement over Homecoming and Origins, whatever that's worth to you. You play as Murphy Pendleton, a prison inmate who is being transferred from one prison to another. The bus crashes in Silent Hill and, well... This is Silent Hill. So you can probably guess where this is going. And in typical Silent Hill fashion, you eventually learn about his past and why he's there. It borrows some concepts from Silent Hill 2, but not to the point that it feels like a ripoff or anything. Yes, I am okay with this. It's just how the series has evolved, and as long as I'm not seeing freaking Pyramid Head, or sexy faceless nurses, or anything equally blatant and unimaginative, I'm at least open to the idea. More on that later. Like Silent Hill 2, one of the people you meet there gives you some insight into Murphy, as in he has something in common with Murphy. This kind of reminds me of Eddie and Angela in Silent Hill 2. And like in Silent Hill 3, another character you meet is a direct link to Murphy's past, kind of like Claudia Wolf. Although maybe more similar to Laura from Silent Hill 2. But one thing that's kind of unique to this game is that there are a couple of other characters who are stuck in Silent Hill just as Murphy is, and their only link to him is that the town is basically using them to help or hinder Murphy. Nothing else about them is revealed. Not sure how I feel about that, but I have to admit that the idea of the town using people to its own ends in this way is pretty interesting. That's the spirit? Whatever. Gameplay is fairly run-of-the-mill for survival horror. Melee weapons are breakable, and you can throw them like an Origins. But it's a lot less silly looking, because you aren't going around beaming monsters with one of the 15 toasters you're carrying around with you somehow. In fact, aside from your firearm, you can only hold one weapon at once. Which sounds like a huge hindrance, but considering that you're surrounded by potential weapons at any given time, it's really not a problem. So you may end up chucking bricks at monsters instead. There are also a few points in the game where Murphy will lose all of his weapons, so don't bother holding back using the ammo. Use it while you can, basically. Yeah, it sucks that you end up losing your firearms, but it generally doesn't take long to find new ones. That's more like it. Seems like a fair trade to me. It's also not overly fight strategy oriented like Homecoming, which was a big relief for me. I can generally get by with button mashing like in earlier games, so yay. You don't have to be a hardcore gamer to play this one. I have no real qualms about the gameplay, but... I have to say that it was kind of an odd decision to make the other world areas function the way they did in Shattered Memories, where you were constantly being pursued by something you couldn't fight and it was either run like hell or die instantly, more or less. And I am speaking as someone who loved Shattered Memories otherwise, but found the other world levels frustrating as hell. I was under the impression that a lot of other fans felt similarly. I'm just really surprised they brought that back. I'll be damned if I can figure out why. It's a good bit of symbolism, if kind of an obvious one. The void that's chasing you represents the truth, which Murphy is literally running from, and when it catches up to him, it destroys him. I caught onto that pretty much immediately. <gasps> Did you see that? No, 
was cool. <laughs> Do it again. But once again, it's frustrating to get through, and you better hope Murphy doesn't get hung up on any corners. Happened to me a couple times. I'm not sure if it's a programming issue or if I just screwed up. Also, speaking of shattered memories, I had the same saving issue with this game that I had with that one, where it'll appear to have saved properly, I'll turn the game off, and then when I come back to it, I'll end up having lost 15 minutes of gameplay. Sometimes I'll end up having to sit through a cutscene a second time. Kind of weird, since it's made by a different developer and it's on a totally different console. In my case, a different generation of console, because I was playing Shattered Memories on the PlayStation 2. And while I'm on the subject of bugs, there's a visual one that I find kind of amusing. If you die and continue in some areas, there will appear to be double doors in some doorways, one of which Murphy can walk through. It doesn't bother me, I just think it's kind of amusing. Oh hey, I fixed it! Or not. <laughs> Visuals are mostly really good. The backgrounds look great and are pretty interactive. Murphy tends to react to things around him. For example, if something falls in front of him suddenly, he'll flinch and let out a scream or an obscenity, or if the ground looks unstable, he'll tread slowly and carefully, even if you're holding the run button. I kind of get a kick out of that. It's like I'm going, hurry up, and he's all, what are you, crazy? I guess what I'm getting at is that he's very animated. Even when you're not doing anything, he'll never just stand there. He'll constantly be looking around with caution, as well he should, considering he's in Silent Hill. Speaking of interacting with your environment, a lot of the stuff in Homecoming that I thought was cool, ducking under things and smashing through boarded up doorways with a pickaxe, has returned. Looked a bit cooler when Alex did it, though. But you can break through padlocks with a wrench or similar weapon now. And you can also shatter glass, which is kind of fun, uh, but not all the time. <laughs> also, I don't know how I got this far without talking about the weather system. As the title suggests, there's a lot of rain and thunder and lightning effects in this game, and it's pretty cool. I don't know if the hardware supports it realistically or not. When Murphy is wet from the rain, it's pretty convincing. His hair and clothes are darker, and his hair and skin is all glossy. But it happens fairly quick. In reality, it'd take a while for someone to look this drenched. It'd be nice if there were midpoints where he's just dotted with raindrops or something. I am being a bit picky, but since the game's weather system is its main gimmick, I figured it'd be appropriate to scrutinize it a bit. Also, the more time you spend outside, the harder it rains. And the harder it rains, the more the monsters come out and the stronger they are. So stay inside when you can. It's funny though, you can almost control the weather. You go inside for just a little while while it's pouring, then go back outside and it's clear again for a while, but then it gradually gets bad again. Once again, the characters mostly look good. The character designs are great, but kind of like in Homecoming, there's a bit of uncanny valleyness going on with a couple of them. It, it's not as noticeable as Homecoming, but it's there. I also have a bit of a nitpick when it comes to animation and cutscenes. Characters move in a way that's kind of mechanical. It's a little rigid, and sometimes their faces appear frozen, or at least not as expressive as they should. It's not all the time with all characters either. It's just a recurring thing that I can't help but notice. Also, let's back up and talk about how Silent Hill developers don't know what children are supposed to look like, and Team Silent is more guilty of it than anyone. Cheryl just flat out had an adult face on a child's body, and it was creepy. Laura looked better, but still a little off. There's still something kind of adult about her face. They struck gold with Walter Sullivan. He is adorable and actually looks like a child. Three following games handled it well, too. And then we have Downpour. Charlie looks fine, thank God. Well, he looks a little like the love child of Macaulay Culkin and Crispin Glover, but that's okay, he's still cute. But there's a scene where you run across two other kids and... Uh, the boy is creepy as hell. And the girl's expressions are terrible. There's a scene where she screams in horror and... Her eyes are totally inexpressive and no one's mouth moves like this, okay? What's really bad, and I'm making it a point to avoid a really big spoiler at this point, is that it happens at the tail of a big reveal. It's this beautifully tragic scene that is so effective, and then they dissolve to this totally unconvincing shot. And it just kills it. But anyway, I didn't mean to get so ranty sounding. None of this stuff really ruins the game for me. But I do notice it, and I have to mention it so I'm not ignoring the elephant in the room. 
And to be fair, Vatra only has like one other game under their belt. I'm sure they did their best. Of course, one has to wonder why Konami would hand over one of their biggest franchises to an inexperienced company, but... I don't want to open up that can of worms. But on the upside, a lot of creativity goes into locations. You get to go inside of a movie at one point. The fixed camera angles drive me nuts, but I have to give credit where it's due as far as creativity and visuals. Not that film grain effects in a Silent Hill game is anything new, but it's put to absolutely perfect use here. There's another area where you go onto a stage and through a brief maze of two-dimensional props that look kind of like they were made by Frank Miller. Throwing you off guard with weird stuff like this is part of what makes a Silent Hill game, in my opinion. But one of my favorite locations to explore is the Centennial Building, specifically the library, because there are a lot of books on shelves where you can pick them up and read whatever spread they were previously open to. There are a lot of references to the history of crime and punishment, and one book talks about the works of Franz Kafka, specifically Metamorphosis and Into the Penal Colony. The description of the latter was interesting enough that I actually looked it up and read it. Anything that gets me to put down the controller and actually read something gets major props. I'll go more into the reading material later. But I also like the Centennial Building because it's just really vast and impressive looking, and it's where we're first introduced to one of the coolest enemies in the game, in my opinion. Speaking of which, remember how with Origins and Homecoming and the movie, I complained about the monster designs being swiped from Silent Hill 2? Well, it's almost as if Konami listened, because other than Shattered Memories, this is the first Silent Hill game since, like, Silent Hill 4 to not have recycled monster designs. It's working! It's working! It's working! That said, unfortunately, the monster designs overall aren't that great. Woohoo! Fuck! But it's not like they look bad or stupid or anything, or that they're not creepy looking. I think in general, the ones we see the most are just a little too humanoid, and it just feels like there could be a little more creativity put into it. Compared to Silent Hill 2, where early versions of the lying figures looked very humanoid, going as far as having boots and high heels and such, but instead of leaving it there, they pushed the envelope until what they ended up with was only vaguely humanoid, making the general look more interesting and the symbolism more subtle. I feel like maybe Downpour could have benefited from the developers taking a similar approach. I guess what I'm saying is that they're not up to the usual Silent Hill standards when it comes to... deformity, I guess? But I cannot stress enough that I don't mean to nitpick, and in no way am I saying that this is a bad Silent Hill game. The last person I want to sound like is that guy who just bitches about a mostly good thing instead of enjoying those good aspects of it. The pompous, know-all, know-nothing idiot who incidentally has a very small penis. Yeah, him. I honestly do recommend Downpour. I feel that a Silent Hill game is successful as long as it's fun to play, the story is compelling, I feel for the main character, and whatever twists it throws in catch me off guard in a way that I don't expect, but that I can think back on it and connect the dots. And Downpour absolutely covers all those bases in my opinion. I just want people to realize going into it that it's not perfect, so maybe they won't have the impossibly high expectations that I feel a lot of Silent Hill fans have when playing a new Silent Hill game. Never mind. So as always, the following segments are going to contain serious spoilers. So if you haven't played Silent Hill Downpour yet, still time. don't watch the rest of the videos after this one yet. Go play the game, then come back and watch the videos and we can compare notes. And yes, I am still using that clip from the Dead Zone series. I recommend that too.